Good evening, folks, and welcome back to another episode uh, on fourth level chemistry. Although, interestingly, this applies to National 5 and higher and advanced higher as well. Um, I would like to introduce you in this very short video to a brand new type of question in a test, in an assessment. And it's a question that doesn't actually have a set answer to it, which is a first for chemistry because there's almost always a right answer uh, and you are supposed to be finding it. This type of question here, an open-ended question, doesn't have a right answer. They are worth three marks. And if you come back for National 5 Chemistry, you will have two of them in your final exam paper, giving you a total of six marks. Now, let's have a look at this format of these questions. It will say something or give you a picture, or there'll be starter clues. And it says here, on television, atoms are often shown to be like little solid round ball bearings. So there's an opening statement, sometimes more detail than that, sometimes just as much detail as I've shown here today. The key, que the key phrase here underneath is using your knowledge of chemistry. And then there's a comment, uh, sorry, there's a comma, and then there's what they want you to do. And it says, comment on the truth of this statement. Now, you guys have spent three years and many hours sitting tests where you're supposed to actually answer the question. <laughs> this is sort of a different case. You don't actually have to answer the question. What's the point of these questions then? What are they supposed to show? They're supposed to let you demonstrate your knowledge of an area of the chemistry course. So the first task you have to do is identify which area or areas they're dealing with. Now, I've said here atoms are often shown at little round ball bearings. That means I'm hoping you would see that which area of the course is this? We're talking about atomic structure. Definitely talking about atomic structure. Possibly bonding, believe it or not. Although you're on shaky grounds there because it mentions atoms here. It doesn't mention any bonding. So we'll probably leave bonding out of it. That's like covalent and ionic and so on. But let's definitely have a look at atomic structure. Now, I say to my folks in the class, what we're looking for you to do is basically sort of make three points to demonstrate your knowledge of this area of the course. So you don't actually have to comment too much on this. I'm hoping that you'll know, of course, that this is obviously rubbish. This is the dumbed down version. But you just can't, if you just say, no atoms are not ball bearings, that's it. You'll get no marks. What you're going to have to do is make three statements or three different areas of your knowledge. You're going to show three different areas that prove that you know that they are not ball bearings. So if it was me, what three areas might jump into my mind? I might want to talk about, number one, subatomic particles. That's just the three particles that make up atoms. Number two, I might want to talk about um, how these are arranged in the atom. So where do you find the particles and anything else on arrangement? And number three, I might want to talk about anything else that springs to mind uh, on this topic. So um, perhaps uh, losing or gaining electrons. Um, you could also go on to talk about how the atoms stack up in the period. A consequence of the structure of the atoms is the periodic table, believe it or not. So, do you see how far away this is from answering whether this is true or not? Let me go into a little bit more detail on another sheet. So, the first heading that I came up with is subatomic particles. Also, in chemistry, please note, folks, that chemistry loves shortcuts. Chemists love shortcut ways of saying things, so you don't have to write a loads and loads and loads of information. If it was me, I think for subatomic particles, I might be tempted to just pop a little table down. I might be te tempted to pop a table that's got the name of the subatomic particles, the charge, possibly the mass, And then I'd pop my protons, neutrons, and electrons in here. I'd have the charges, plus one, zero, minus one. I'd have the masses, 
one AMU, one AMU, almost nothing. That's definitely me got at least one mark just from that table. Section number two was arrangement of these particles. And then I would probably want to either write or once again draw a diagram. I'm a bit lazy, so if drawing a diagram is the way that to do it, personally I think that's how I would do it. I would come up with something like a wee labelled diagram maybe of an atom. So you'd have some protons in the nucleus of the atom. We'd, and I'd label these of course, we'd put a key at the side, so these are protons. Um, I'd have some uh, neutrons. Um, and then round about it, I'd have electrons. And you could go into the details of the fact that electrons don't all occupy the same layer. One, two, three, four. So we need four electrons, so we could have one electron here, two electrons in the first layer, and then you can have a couple of electrons in the next layer as well. Something like that. Um, frankly, this would probably, at, at third year level, this would probably get you the answer, uh, all three marks. But if you want to show off, I'd go for... Um, uh, what else might I mention? I might mention... I, I just thought of something here. Sorry, it slipped my mind. Excuse me, two seconds. Oh yeah, I might... I might. I said periodic table. You could go ahead and do that. Another option for number three would be to mention definitions of things like the atomic number. Or the mass number. I might want to mention, as an alternative, I would want to mention why atoms are neutral. They've got positive and negative charges in them. Um, that's because, of course, the positives equals the negatives. That is what you need to do in order to answer this original slightly odd question. So whenever you see this magic phrase here, guys, using your knowledge of chemistry, they're not actually necessarily looking for you to answer the question. They're looking for you to show off your knowledge of the area of the course. In this case, atomic structure. Hopefully um, that's been of some help. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.